Hi, everybody. It's Father Nathan. You're uh, on the Joyful Friar podcast. It's great to have you along. One of the key ideas in the Advent season uh, is uh, waiting in hope. You know, I've entitled this podcast Joyful Friar because my spiritual father, St. Dominic, what was known that it was his nickname and joy was what attracted me to being being a member of this particular religious family um, because I like joy and and I don't believe that it's necessary to kind of capitulate to sadness there are seasons of our lives that involve diminishment sadness tragedy um uh, trauma, but I like the fact that um, I believe, at least in the Christian tradition in which I've been raised, Good Friday. It's so nervy to even call that good. It's the day that that uh, Jesus is 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 tortured and killed as a public criminal, but three days later we believe he is risen from the dead, and there's the good news to be told about new life. Well, anyway. I, I believe in joyful hope. Hope always has to do with the future. You don't hope for uh, yesterday's news. You you hope about tomorrow. And tomorrow always has some unreality about it because it hasn't happened yet. You can look forward in joyful hope or you can look forward in anxiety because they both borrow from an unknown. The future always says an, an element of unreality about it because it hasn't happened yet. And as much as you might try to be a predictor of the future, and there are times when you might be competent to do that. Um, there are all, you know, people that do the stock market or, you know, sports. I love sports. And there there are, are lots of different things that are pre predictable outcomes of events that haven't yet happened. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking more about um, being having joyful hope about something that hasn't happened yet. For example, uh, when you know that someone you love is going to visit, maybe somebody you don't see very often, but they've already bought the plane tickets, you, you, you're getting the guest room ready, you're, you're anticipating what we're going to do when they're here and all of that. Uh, doesn't that, you've had that happen, haven't you? Haven't you lived in and joyful anticipation of something that hasn't happened yet, but you're pretty certain it will because it's already uh, pretty much a given. Well, we look in the Advent season to Christmas. And Christmas, of course, involves the birth of a baby who in our tradition, we believe, uh, comes into the world and makes an enormous impact for the good on it. But the Advent season the the stories that are told in in Christian worship involve pregnancy a lot, of Mary um, being invited to cooperate with this idea that God has that would, if she says yes, involve her giving birth to this extraordinary child. Uh, and so during the Advent season, the themes around pregnancy are. Uh, really pronounced and uh, I've, I haven't had children um, I've been around plenty of pregnancies and I listen and usually there's excitement at this news at least there often is and then there's um, the question of when's the due date you know When's the when is this expected child to when is the child expected to arrive? And then there's all of the incremental growth that happens along the way. Uh, much of it exciting and joyful. Uh, some of it may be fraught with uh, some nervousness about um, the health of the child or the mother or whatnot, the pain of childbirth and the welcoming of the new uh, life into the world. That, those themes go on in the Advent season too. Even, and even for those of us who are not carrying a child within us, the Advent season invites us to consider what is in me that 
seems like a budding new growth edge. Where in me is there something that feels like it's stirring, that feels like it's kicking? Where, where, where does my gut tell me that something new could be born in me if I let it be? Like that image of the, the uh, shoot that sprouts from the stump, sometimes you can see a plant putting all of its effort into this one bud. Um, I have, in recent years, I've had the custom in the Christmas season of sending people a bulb plant. Do you know what an amaryllis is? It's a, uh, it's a, a plant that grows from a bulb and they can be given as gifts in the Christmas season. Uh, and they are, they are, the ones that I give as gifts arrive in, um, in a box with dirt and a little instruction that all you need to do is give it a little water and some sunshine and then you can watch it come to life. I like to give that as a gift. And I, when I do it, I usually arrange for the shipment date to be uh, the week before Advent begins so that it arrives and it can be taken out of its uh, container and put out where uh, the individual or the family can watch it grow bit by bit. And actually, they grow sometimes really fast, uh, like an inch a day or something, where it just if you, if you turn away for a day or two, uh, you come back and oh my God, look at how how much it's grown. And then during the the the, the Christmas season, which for us, you know, you know that song that the twelve days of Christmas, Christmas starts for us on December twenty fourth at, at at sunset, and then moves for about a two week period into early January. So I I like giving an amaryllis because it blooms during the Christmas season, and so people can watch the beauty of it emerge a little bit at a time. Well, at, by the time uh, it it uh, wears itself out and uh, it begins to go into the cycle of death, that the the uh, the blooms wither, and eventually the plant will begin to dry up. And the the plant knows how to take the energy that's left in the stalk that it created and pull it back into the bulb. You're not supposed to cut a bulb plant the way that you might trim a bunch of other things. I really know very little about this, but I think I'm speaking the truth that you're supposed to let a bulb plant just kind of die naturally because while it's doing that, it's pulling some of the energy out of that uh, stock back into the bulb to store it for next season. Uh, you know, if you live anywhere that it does snow, you might have some bulb plants that pop up uh, you know, in March or something, even while there might still be snow on the ground, you might see uh, some shoot coming up uh, out of the cold earth is kind of a first indicator that spring is coming. Well, anyway, I, I like doing that, uh, uh, giving those as a gift because it sort of parallels the Advent season. But you might, uh, in a, as a spiritual practice, look at um, in my in stillness, in quiet, in meditation. Do I sense that God, my creator, is doing something new in me? And maybe if you're not a theist, uh, however you imagine your life and, uh, and your being here, you, you might just uh, ask of yourself or ask of your higher power, what's new? What's, what's being grown in me? And I believe even very old people can do that. I'm the oldest I've ever been today. And I'm still finding that there's new life in me and, uh, and new things uh, emerging and things that I can be excited and hopeful about. So, uh, and that that really doesn't have to be determined by external events. You can have illness, you can have death, the kind of things that are in a marriage now, you know, poverty, illness, death. Um Love can stand up to those and just say, no, I'll love anyway. I'll love, yep, I'll love you then, I'll love you then, I'll love you then until death do us part. And then I believe that that even after that, love never dies. And and I believe that people can find their way home to one another in the afterlife, that that really appeals to them. Uh, but what's new in you? Uh, what's what's coming to be? What's growing? And, and how will it make the world better? How will the new thing in you Bless your surroundings, bless the people around you, bless the world at large. Those are appropriate thoughts for 
the Advent season. Thanks for being a part of this Advent series. God bless you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Joyful Friar. You can visit me at nathan-castle.com. Send me a message by clicking the contact button. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can make a donation by clicking the donate button. See you next time. God bless.